Welcome to the Law Challenge. And on the Law Challenge, all we do is to attempt to share the fragrance of the law, spreading it as much as possible. And here we have come so soon to the semi-final stage of this competition. This is the Law Challenge 2019. The Law Challenge. Is speaking. And today, it is battle between King's University College and University of Ghana. We begin with the first round. And the first round is normally a general uh, question round. In the first round, you will have five questions. You have 30 seconds to answer a question. A question answered correctly will attract the maximum max of 10. And if you are unable to, it will go on to your, the next theme as a bonus, attracting five marks for a correct answer. And that will be for 15 seconds. I'll start very typically from my right. And the first question will go to the King's University College, ably represented by Seth uh, Glechu. Uh, Jeremy Apia Ado and Campbell Della Aivo. So here is your question, King's University College. Fred went to the poolside to relax. Must have been as a result of a lot of study or burning the midnight candle, like you do. And he saw his classmate Susie swimming in the pool. Fred has for a very long time been longing to have Susie as his girlfriend. But all his advances have been unsuccessful. So what did he do on this occasion? He decided to pull Susie's clothing that was hanging there. He took them away. Actually, Susie was in the pool naked. Even though this fact was unknown to her, we want to find out, can she take any legal action against Fred? The fact of Fred picking the clothing without she also even knowing. Can she take any action against Fred? If yes, what action? And if no, why? Seth, let you. Okay, sir. For the mere fact that she was naked in the pool and without her proud notice that Fred had indeed taken her clothes, which was, which was hanging outside. And for the fact that she was naked, she can take an action against Fred. And the possible, uh, the possible action she can take against Fred should be defamation. Because under the elements of defamation, uh, it states that, one, the, the statement must be defamatory, which it should, uh, for hot, the act must be defamatory, because what Fred did what, what to her was very, very bad. And also, the statement must, it must also be about the claimant, which is... Uh, 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 I'm sorry, you've just been bailed out. Let's go for a bonus and see if University of Ghana will be successful because your attempt, unfortunately, has been abysmal. Yes, University of Ghana. Christine. Yes, sir. And this brings into question the thought of false imprisonment. And under this thought, there has to be an imprisonment without justification. The imprisonment must be total. It has to be a direct act and not an omission to act. And then there is an issue of knowledge. In the case of Marin and Bo, the court held that knowledge is not necessarily in, um, knowledge is important in false imprisonment. I suppose However, that you have already exhausted your time. Now, the, the question says Susie was unaware. Because she was unaware, you answered it from a premise that she must have become aware that her clothing had been taken, but later on. You also began to answer from a point of view that she must have become aware that her clothing had been taken, but that was later. You get that? Right. And it is on that basis that you are seeking to say she can have an action. But your, your premises was completely off the track because a question of defamation does not arise, okay? And I will not define defamation here now for you because we don't know what may come up next in the questions. Now, if you also took it completely, 
that she, she never became aware and forever never became aware, then she could not have an action. But you, you, you proceed on the presumption that she must have become aware later and therefore was unable to emerge from the pool. On that basis, you would have been right to say false imprisonment. But the reason I have a second thought is that the question was clear, that she was actually unaware. So there was no occasion for her to say, I wanted to emerge, but I couldn't because I couldn't, I couldn't find my clothing. And I knew that it was um, Fred who had taken that action against me. So on that basis, you do not deserve any of the bonus. Yeah, OK, right. Yeah. We will now take your substantive question, University of Ghana. Mark and Mensa are neighbors, but the former finds the latter quarrelsome. And so the two are not on talking terms. Mark found out one day that the mango tree on his compound has a swarm of bees on it, but he did not fell the tree. One windy day, the wind blew down the mango tree. Where did it fall? It fell on Mensa's compound, whereupon the bees on the falling mango tree attacked Mensa and killed Mensa's favorite dog. Has Mensa any cause of action against Mark? If so, what is this action? University of Ghana. Yes, okay. Christine Selikim. The area, the thoughts in this question is the principle as stated in Rylance and Fletcher. And the principle is that where a person accumulates or causes to be accumulated or puts um, the land to a non-natural use, then if any damage is caused to another's person, another person's land, then the person is liable. In this case, the um, Mark accumulated bees on his land, and then the bees escaped to uh, maintain land and caused damage to his dog, in this case, the death of the dog. And therefore, Mark can sustain an action under the principle of Ryland and Fletcher. Yes. Yes, Mark has a course of action in nuisance. We shall now move to the King's University College. And King's University College, here is your question. Kwesi Dagomba went to a shopping mall in the East Legon area in Accra. And whilst leaving, found a parcel that was found to contain money. He gave it to the mall owners through the supervisor of the mall to keep until the real owner was found. The shop operators advertised for the owner, but no one showed up. Kwesi, after three years, applied for the return of the money. Should the shopping mall give the money to Kwesi Dagomba? If your answer is yes, explain why. If your answer is no, explain why. <coughs> yes, Jeremy? The answer is no because Kwesi, Kwesi never owned the money. And upon finding the money, um, he, it never, uh, he, never became, <sighs> he never became the owner of that money. And therefore, whether finding it um, they not finding it on a later day or not. He had no actual um, interest in that money. Therefore, it could not fall to him. Now, it falls onto the, it falls onto the shop owners to take appropriate measures to ensure that the money reaches appropriate authorities. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, that won't be the correct answer. Shall we have University of Ghana attempt this for a bonus? Yes, Christine. Yes, sir. And sir, please, this falls under conversion when it comes to um, the right of a finder. Under the thought, a, right, um, a finder has a right against the whole world except the actual owner. So in, the, in this case, the um, Kwesi can um, recover the items from the And that is and absolutely correct because the finder of a shuttle has better title than all except the true owner. Thank you once again for that impressive performance, University of Ghana. Shall we have your substantive question, University of Ghana? Professor Kofi Labi was the inventor and registered proprietor of an original soap he manufactured. It is popular and it is, he's described it as spots remover, pimples and all forms of bumps on the human skin. Akasakasa published about Professor Labi that the patent he claimed he had did not exist and that his goods 
were of inferior quality and not fit for purpose. Professor Labi feels extremely hurt by the publication and has consulted you, Apraku, Christine, and Seth, with a view to taking a legal action against Akasakasa. Can he sue Akasakasa for libel and claim damages and compensation? Yes, Christine. Okay, so please, this calls into question the thoughts of defamation. And the elements that need to be proved are one, that the um, words or the words used in this case was capable of a defamatory meaning. And two, if the words are interpreted in their literal sense, then it is defamatory, or unless an innuendo is being relied upon. Thirdly, the defamation must be directed as the, at the plaintiff. And fourthly, there has to be a publication. In this case, all the elements have been gone through, and therefore, Professor, Kuma, Professor Kofi Labi can can sustain an action in libel. In an action for libel, it is actionable per se. Thank you very much. Except that I will not be able to award the full marks to you because of your inability to establish all the ingredients required for a claimant to be successful in a defamation action. There ought to be a publication which is false, correct? Once that falsehood has been published, it ought to have been called into question by right-thinking members of the society, correct? Yes, On that score, I think you are deserving of six of the total marks. <laughs> it's your turn, King's University College. Where an accused person is facing a criminal charge before a court, of course, of competent jurisdiction. He or she is presumed to be innocent until after the trial and there is sufficient evidence for which the court will find him guilty or the accused person by himself pleads guilty voluntarily to the offense. This is what we call presumption of innocence. Not so? Where can we find this in the Constitution of Ghana? 14 of the 1992 constitution that's incorrect article 19 of the 1992 constitution and that's correct <laughs> and whilst my expectation is that you will exhaust the answer and because you have not been able to exhaust the answer i'll give you eight out of ten It's your turn, University of Ghana. Let's see if you can continue as you have begun. In which case did the Supreme Court of Ghana hold that there was no right of further appeal from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court in respect of an appeal from an election petition determined by the High Court under Article 99.1 of the 1992 Constitution? Yes, Apraku. Um, sir, please, in the Yamikan case. And that is correct. <laughs> Except that the full title is Inri Parliamentary Election for Wallensi Constituency, Zakaria versus Yamikan, 2003 2004, Supreme Court of Ghana Law Reports. Thank you very much for that performance. King's University College, here is your question. Tony is a commercial sex worker. That's a Polish description for, as they say, prostitution. Wafa J entered in a contract with her for her services for some of his hotel guests and promised to pay 100 Ghana CDs per person. After one week of working together, Wafa J is refusing to pay. Tuni wants to sue Wafa J to recover her fees. What will the Ghanaian court say about this action? Yes, Seth. Sir, please, it is a principle under illegality which are unenforceable and uh, which states that the court will not enforce any immoral act which has been established in the case of peers and books that uh, should anybody uh, uh, indulge in any immoral uh, activity, the, the, the law will consider that activity as an illegal contract. Hence, it will be void. 
So there's no way uh, Tony will enforce any action against uh, Ufaje because the contract is deemed to be illegal. Hence, it will not it will be void. That is correct. <laughs> Was it your expectation that King's University would have said anything extra apart from the contract being one that is illegal and therefore not enforceable under the laws of Ghana? Yes. The contract is against public policy. Exactly. That is only an additional. But it was important to note. Okay? Right. So you are correct. And I'll give you nine of the ten marks. The answer I expected of you was to say that it was an illegal contract and also that it's against public policy. You had said, use the word illegal to commence your answer. But after that, you kept ref re referring to immoral, immoral, immoral. Right. A slay queen, Lizzie Billy Billy, has been a mistress of Onipenya for some time now, and the former contracted a venereal disease after having sexual intercourse with the latter. It appears Onipenya was aware of the fact of his infection, but did not disclose it to Lizzie Belebele. Lizzie Belebele sued for assault on the grounds that she consented to sex and not to the disease, and that by failing to disclose the fact of his infection, he had procured her consent by fraud. What are her chances of success against Onipenya in a suit? Yes, Christine. So please, this, um, this, um, the scenario here falls squarely within the case of Higati and Shine. In that case, the court held that um, sex is a continuing act, and therefore, so far as the slay queen in this in this instance, Lizzie consented to the um, sex, the consent moves to the consequences of the act, and therefore, Lizzie cannot bring an action to state that his consent, her consent was um, um, uh, um, her consent was nullified by the fraud of Onipania, so she doesn't have a cause of action. Okay, thank you very much, and that is correct, and. And essentially that he did not owe a duty to disclose the infection to the slay queen. Thank you very much, University of Ghana. To King's University College, and here is your question. Joe Boy, an undergraduate in one of the tertiary institutions, on an outing with his course mate, Vivienne, induced the latter to take some concoction which rendered her unconscious. So, he had sex with her. As a result, Vivian suffered considerable damage. Certainly, the action of Joe Boy is criminal in nature and also constitutes a thought. Vivian has come to you seeking advice. What will you tell her? Yes, Seth. this scenario since uh, joe boy uh, touched vivian without her consent it will amount to battery which which is that she's not aware or she, uh, she's not aware of uh, what she, she did not consent to uh, uh, joe boys touching he, uh, her and for that matter it will amount to battery and that will be the liability under thought and also And in, for the criminal liability, there is absence of consent when he had sexual intercourse with her. Therefore, it will amount to rape under Section 85 of Act 29. And also, there is a liability of assault and battery under the criminal, under Act 29 of the... So, I'll give you five out of the ten marks on this occasion. Here is your question, University of Ghana. Auntie Aquile, a confectioner who prepares both roots and chips, used mortar and pistol for her work in a place 
bounding the plaintiff's house. The plaintiff, Atta, was also a physician. When he built the consulting room on his land, he complained that the vibration from the pounding became a nuisance. Can Atta bring a successful action against Antiaquele? If yes, explain. If no, why? Yes, Aprako. Um, Atta can successfully bring an action against Antiaquele by virtue of the fact that, having regard to the locality, um, it was not suited for what Aquile was doing, that is the mortar and the pistol, because it was a, resident, a residential area. So we can reasonably infer that because her pounding disturbed another person who lived in a residence, then it was it constituted nuisance because it interfered with the work of the neighbor. And that is correct. <laughs> the noise that was made and the vibration by the defendants constituted nuisance. On that note, we end the first round. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Gaul Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goal Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. You're welcome back, and this is the Law Challenge 2019. And at the end of the first round, University of Ghana made 51 points, and King's University College, 22 points. A round of applause to all of them. Now we begin round two, and round two is a buzzer round. We deal with matters concerning crime, contract, torts, again, perhaps company, and the Ghana legal system. This is the round we call Who Am I? You have 30 seconds to deliver your answer. If you get it correctly, you get 10 marks, but most unfortunately, if you get it wrongly, incorrectly, you lose five marks. Let's get ready. I am a statement of material facts made prior to a contract by one party to the other, which is false and misleading. Yes, King's University College, Seth. Misrepresentation. That is correct. <laughs> which is false or misleading and which induce the other party to enter into a contract. I am of three kinds. 
My general effect is to render a contract voidable. By me, a party may rescind his or her contract entered into with another. A party who is offended by me may claim damages if I am fraudulent or negligent. Right. Once again, I am a statement. I am a promise. A proposition. Sure. King's University College. Yes, Seth. Terms of contract. And that is correct. <laughs> and let me continue and complete the statements. I form part of a contract. I do not have equal significance. I may be of major significance or minor significance. I am categorized into three. In certain limited ways, the courts occasionally import me into contracts. I bring into a contract business efficacy. I am the one who defines the respective rights and obligations to be assumed by the parties under any agreements and you are correct king's university college terms of contracts now to the third statement i am the simplest form of organizing and doing business are you pressing the buzzer <laughs> yes university of ghana so proprietorship. yes and that is correct christine And I am surprised at how you guys are able to press the buzzer even at the third word, not a complete sentence. A round of applause again to these guys. So let me continue and complete the statement. I am often called enterprise. There is no formal requirement for my existence. Decision making is very easy for me. Most financial institutions shy away or worry when dealing with me. I am not separated from the business and the individuals behind my establishment. I am the most popular among my group. And University of Ghana, that was outstanding. Sole proprietorship. I did not know what I was stating to you at that point. To the fourth statement, I am a contract under seal between the company and the members, officers and between the members and officers. Yes, University of Ghana. Yes, Seth. Regulations of the company. And that is correct. Regulations of the company. And if I may continue, I am by special resolution altered and amended. By me, the company draws its powers and objectives and objects. Any amendments or alteration made on me shall not conflict with any order of a court. The court has powers to disregard any alteration as invalid unless it is made for the benefit of the company as a whole. And you got that right. Regulations of a company or constitution of a company. To the fifth statement, King's University College, you're slowing down. You began surprising everybody else. So here we go. I am held in each year, but not beyond 18 months. Yes, Jeremy. Annual general meeting. And that is absolutely correct. <laughs> but not beyond 18 months. When I am in default, the registrar may, on his own motion or through an application by any officer or a member, call or direct my calling and give other ancillary or consequential direction. I transact ordinary and extraordinary businesses of the company. Out of me, dividends are declared, elections and removal of directors are done through me. I also 
fixed salaries or fees of auditors. And that is correct. Annual general meeting of a company. So here is the final statement. University of Ghana and King's University College who will get this correct first. I am an action from which the specific resultant event occurred. A person shall not be convicted of having intentionally or negligently causing an event if irrespective of the act of that person and the acts of any of the persons acting jointly with that person, the event would not have University of Ghana, uh, Praku, Seth, causation. I ignore you and proceed. The event will not have happened but for the existence of a state of facts or the intervention of any other event of any other person. The probability of the existence of interven or intervention of which other event or person, the accused person, did not take into consideration and did not have University of Ghana, unfortunately, and I will continue from the King's University College. Yes. Um, Seth. Novus Atus Intervenis. And that is correct. <laughs> Thank you, and I will complete the statement. Uh, of which other event or person the accused person did not take into consideration and did not have a reason to take into consideration. Yes, and that is correct. I am Novus Actus Intervenis. Or break in the chain of causation and on that note we come to the end of the second round at the end of the second round the buzz around university of ghana 15 points and king's university college beginning to show that they can recover 40 points So, round one and round two results put together. University of Ghana, 66 points, and King's University College, 62 points. <laughs> the law challenge. Legally speaking. Legally speaking, indeed, and spreading the fragrance of the law. And in this third round, Lady and gentlemen, you are so familiar with the rules. You will have three quotations read out to you. You'll identify who they are attributed to. And I may require you to tell me in which case these quotations may be found. You have 20 seconds to do that. And if you answer correctly, you get 15 marks for that correct answer. This round, you have one opportunity, and it is also non-transferable. So we begin. King's University College. Equality before the law requires equal treatment of those familiarly placed, implying different treatment in respect of those with different characteristics. In which case was this statement first made? Unfortunately, you have been bailed out and there is no bonus, it's not transferable, but let's find out if University of Ghana, Apraku, Christine, Seth. Try it. Is it um, that about GSC in Nati and Gati? That is absolutely correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, no max. <laughs> <laughs> University of Ghana. In which case did Lord Denin the famous Lord Denning, the judge's judge, make the following statement. Estopel is a shield and not a sword. It is a defense against a person who is going back on a promise to waive rights under the contract, but not a means of bringing an action. Which case is this? Yes, Christine. The high trees case. Sorry, no. 
Yes, do you have an idea? Comb and comb. And that is absolutely right. Unfortunately, again, no marks. King's College. In which case did Taylor JSC hold that court, although a meeting was not invalidated merely by the accidental omission to give notice of a general meeting to a member? The deliberate withholding of notice of a meeting to a member invalidated. Yes, uh, Campbell? Bedu Versam. Not correct. Yes, University of Ghana, non transferable, but let's know if you have an idea. We don't know. You don't know. <laughs> That is a very sincere answer. And a lawyer is expected to be a person of integrity and high moral character. So that is refreshing. We don't know. The answer is Lugu Terra versus Northern Engineering Limited. The case that you are so, so familiar with. University of Ghana, here is your statement or quotation. Rules of interpretation are not to be understood as binding force. They are our servants, not our masters. They are aids to construction, presumptions or pointers. Who is speaking? In which case? Yes, Christine. That is about JSC in a sorry in Attorney General. Yes, he may have said things closer to this statement, but this statement belongs to Lord Reed in Mansell versus Olens, 1975. All England report. <laughs> King's College. In Yaminiva versus the state, the Supreme Court held that, quote, these subsections of the section put into a statutory form form the general principle of law that while ignorance of the law is no defense, ignorance of fact is a complete defense. Who was speaking? Apalu, GSC. That's wrong. Sako de Adu. That's incorrect. You have been bailed out. It's a non-transferable round. And once again, University of Ghana getting ready to get it correct for no points. <laughs> yes, Christine. Olenu JSC. Exactly. Olenu JSC. Olenu JSC. So, you guys from the University of Ghana have gotten about three or how many two. correct? Two correct for no points. You have gotten one correct for no points. Okay. This will be your last. University of Ghana. Who is speaking and in which case? It is undoubtedly the province of the judicial department to say what the law is. Apraku? Marshall C.J. Imabria Madison. Exactly. <laughs> and why did it take you so long? And we thought we were continuing. Okay. I wasn't continuing. Thank you very much. And now, lady and gentlemen, look to the screen identify the image whose image do you see yes campbell justice yao apple and that is correct justice yao apple his lordship justice yao apple of the supreme court of ghana university of ghana Let's find out if you're familiar with this personality in the legal fraternity. <laughs> I, I <can> see. 
<laughs> yes, Aprako. Mr. Tony Forsen, the Ghana Bar Association president. And that is correct. Mr. Anthony Forsen Jr., president of the Ghana Bar Association. And that is where we bring to a close the third round of this semi-final <laughs> stage. Welcome back to the Law Challenge 2019. And at the end of the third round in this semi final stage, the results are King's University College, who have shown a lot of promise from the second round, 15 points, and University of Ghana, 30 points. First, second, and third rounds put together, King's University College have 77 points. As against University of Ghana, which has 96 points. A round of applause for them. Now we proceed to the fourth and final round in this semi-final contest between University of Ghana and King's University College Faculties of Law. And this is the round known as the Rapid Round. In this Rapid Fire Round, you nominate a member to represent you. I ask as many as 10 questions, and you are expected to give me the response, either it is true or false, within 120 seconds. If you get it correct, you get five marks awarded in favor of your team. And if within the time, 120 seconds, you have exhausted your questions but have not exhausted your time, if you skipped any question, you have the opportunity to answer that question. And I must tell King's University College, I think in the preliminary rounds, you got some salvation in this kind of round. Right. So you know that this is a round that you can get salvation. So University of Ghana, you must be careful. In this round, you nominate one of your own as the team leader who will respond to my questions 
to tell me whether the statement I make is true or false. And you have 10 questions in 120 seconds. You get five marks for a correct answer. If your time is not exhausted by the time the 10th question is asked, it means if you had skipped a question earlier, you still have the opportunity to return to that question and answer it. Are we clear? Yes. All right. So let's begin with King's University College. And your time starts now. A contract may be illegal because the doing of an act is unlawful because it is prohibited by statute. True, true or false? True. That is true. To prevent a situation of conflict under Section 206 of the Repealed Act 179, a director with interest in any transaction his company enters into must declare such interest before or after true. the transaction. True. true or false? True. And that is true. Any other meeting called by a company besides the annual general meeting is known as emergency general meeting. True, true or false? True. That is false. The new Companies Act, Act 992, gives the secretary of a company the duty to file annual returns electronically. True or false? False. That is true. A, propriet a, a property right is a right which exists in relation to a thing, true or false? True. That is true. A personal right is an entitlement which a person enjoys against another, true or false? True. That is true. The law of immovable property comprises the range of legal rules and principles which regulate true. proprietary issues relating to true. land, true or true. false? That is true. Chapter 2 of the 1992 Constitution deals with the territories of Ghana. True or false? True. That is true. Articles 12 to 33, as enshrined in the 1992 Constitution, deal with fundamental true. human rights. True, true or false? True. And that is true. A single judge of the Court of Appeal may sit in all matters. True or false? false. That is false. All lands in Ghana shall be vested in the President on behalf of and true, in trust true, for the people of true. Ghana. That is false. Only public land. That was a wonderful performance. You got two wrong out of uh, 10 questions. I actually added an additional question and that was wrong. So you had 11 questions and you got three wrong. The, fair, the last question is ruled out. Therefore, what it means is that you answered 10 questions to wrong answers. Thank you very much. All right, so now the turn of University of Ghana and University of Ghana, your time starts now. Both inchoate and coate offenses are treated as complete offenses. True or false? False. That's true. A special resolution requires 75% majority votes for it to be passed. True or false? True. That's true. A promoter is one who has been engaged in the formation of a company. True or false? True. That is true. A lawyer title is the ultimate title. True or false? True. The case of Nyansashe versus Afibiesan is a case on a lawyer title being vested in individuals. True, true. or false? True. true. The locus classicus on acquisition of a lawyer title is the case of Ohiming versus AJ. True or false? True. That is true. If a land is vested in a head stool, the, that land first belongs to the sub stool. True or false? false? That is true. Article 20 of the 1992 Constitution deals with loss of a lawyer title through conquest. True or false? False. False. Compulsory acquisition. Stool property cannot be seized under an execution order without written consent of the minister. True or false? True. That is true. A spouse shall not be deprived of a reasonable provision out of the estate of a spouse whether or not there is a will or not. True or false? True. That is true. A spouse shall have equal access to property jointly acquired during marriage. True or true. false? True.
And that was an excellent performance bailed out, of course, on the 11th question, which is an illegal question. Ten questions, and you had eight of those questions correct. Once again, a round of applause for the University of Ghana. And that is where we bring to our close the fourth round. And at the end of the fourth round, here are the results. King's University College, 40 points. And University of Ghana, 40 points. <laughs> Cumulatively from round one, two, three, up to round four, the King's University College has a total of 100 and 17 points and University of Ghana has 136 points so obviously the winner of the semi-final contest between University of Ghana and the King's University College is the University of Ghana a round of applause for them all right so sportsmanship please Move to the next and shake hands. Okay, and that was that was great. That was great. That was great. You came, you came from hell to heaven's gates. Right, 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 right. Apraku, Apraku has been marking the time. You know the marks, and he's taking notes of the marks.